Hello, welcome to All These Repairs. Today we will be fixing some strip bolts on this VW Tiguan. VW uses an aluminum head. When they do replace parts and end up doing carbon cleaning on these vehicles, they tighten the bolts too much and then they strip them out of the aluminum head. So today we'll be fixing that with a time cert. The question that people have is what's the difference between a time cert versus a helicoil? These I can buy at your local Napa. Time certs are a little harder to find and they're significantly more expensive. I think this kit came with six inserts and cost $70, where this probably was $20. But the difference is stark and the investment is well worth it. This helicoil kit inserts, as you can tell by the name, this little coil where you end up breaking this little end piece off. But then to hold everything, you just have this little coil of turned metal here that's not very sturdy. Whereas a time cert on the other hand, uses a full piece of steel to insert into that bolt hole and does a much better job holding it in there tighter and it's much more long, better for longevity purposes. So that's why if you're going to repair something, just buy the time cert. It does cost more, but it's always gonna be worth it. So the tools required for this repair is going to be your time cert kit. I like to use a Sharpie and a Q-tip so that I can measure the depth of the hole. You're going to need this tapping tool here that keeps everything straight and square. This drill bits out of the time cert kit. Some WD-40 or something to lubricate it, everything as you're drilling and tapping. You might even need a hand drill. Worksite preparation, we're going to be drilling out aluminum and cutting new threads. So this is going to be producing a ton of metal shavings. So we really don't want to get metal shavings into any engine components. So here I've taped off the intake, I've plugged the injector holes, I've covered the oil filter cover or oil filter mount very well. And anywhere else, like I said, that you don't want shavings, make sure to cover it or remove it. Additionally, you want as much access as possible when you're doing this. So we will be doing these three right here because they're all stripped for almost a quarter of an inch or about four millimeters in. So make sure that there's nothing in the way so that we can get to everything as well as possible with our tools. For all these cutting processes, use WD-40 or something like that to lubricate the holes. And then you can grab your Q-tip, measure how deep this hole is, grab a Sharpie and make a mark. Since this is a blind hole where we don't know exactly how deep it is, we have to mark all of our bits. So once that's marked, take your Q-tip and we're gonna mark our drill bit. As you see, I actually already have a mark there from the last hole that I repaired which was here on the side of the vacuum pump. That was actually a rather challenging repair. Next step will be to get your drill bit from your time cert kit and drill out this hole, but don't go any further than the mark we made. You can do this with a driller by hand. I can't really fit a drill in here right now and I don't have a nice fancy small angle one. I probably should get one, but I'm just gonna do this by hand very carefully. All right, I've drilled all the way to my mark, removed the drill bit, here you can see this is the hole that we drilled out. Looks like we removed all of the threads. And now we can move on to the next step. Counter boring is rather simple. We're going to spray some lubricant on it again. I'm going to be utilizing the counter bore. Um, I did manage to get my drill to fit in here. This one, if you do this by hand, you're going to lose a wrist. So for this one, just counter bore it. Use a slower speed. And that looks to be it, kind of more complete. With our tap, make sure that we also mark approximately the depth of the hole that we're gonna tap it to. And that's this little black line right here. For this, you want to definitely use a tap wrench. Oil the tap a little bit. Oil the hole that we're trying to tap. I have this mini tap wrench, I guess, that we'll be utilizing for this repair. Make sure it's perpendicular and very slowly start cutting. <coughs> Greetings from the rooster in the background. Make sure that there's plenty of cutting fluid, which in this case we're utilizing WD-40 for. 
and keep cutting until we reach our, reach our mark that we made. All right, we've cut to more or less our mark. Carefully remove the tool. We don't want to booger up the threads right as we're removing it that we just very carefully cut. And before we insert the time cert, we want to make sure that there's no any, we want to make sure that there's no aluminum shavings in the hole. So use some compressed air and carefully blow it out. Here's a close up of the threads we cut. As you can see, they're pretty darn clean. They look good. We will be taking our driver insert tool, which is the last tool in the kit, inserting it all the way and then making a mark on its threads. We could also just use our Q-tip here of how far we can insert this tool. It's kind of hard to see, but I know where the mark is. We don't want to bottom out the tool inserting the, dr the driver, inserting the time cert, because if we do that, we are just going to strip the threads that we just cut. So that's why it's really, really important not to bottom out this tool when we're inserting the time cert. We can take our time cert Carefully start screwing it in. Oh, so nice. New threads that are in perfect shape are always really satisfying. Grab the driver tool that we just marked and add a few drops of motor oil as the protocol suggests to oil the tool because the way this works is these threads are tapered right here and the time cert doesn't have threads cut all the way to the end. So this tool effectively cuts threads and squishes the end of it open. And that's how it makes a really, really tight friction fit inside of our aluminum head. So now that the driver tool is lubricated, start screwing it in to the time cert. The tool has to go approximately a quarter of an inch through the time cert so that it properly holds. The other way to know when you've screwed it far enough is you'll feel there will be increasing resistance as the tool cuts the threads and then the resistance will decrease. Do it another turn or two past that and then you form the time cert. Now remove the tool. And now we can take a look at our repair. As you can see the time cert is sunken just a tad below the aluminum surface so that there will be no interference with the intake manifold that's screwed onto it and the time cert is in there so solid it's going to outlast all the rest of the aluminum threads on this block. And since I'm a lucky man, I get to repeat this on two more holes on this head. The techniques that I covered in this video today can be applied on a broad range of vehicles. This is actually the sixth thread repair that I did exactly on this engine, this Tiguan, because previous mechanics over torqued it. I've also done it on some other VW Mark ones that I have as well. This is also why I always include the torque specs in all of my videos because it's just too easy to follow the torque spec and to tighten the fastener to the torque that the engineer designed the fastener to be tightened. And if you use a torque wrench for all your repairs, you will almost never have any issues with stripping out threads or also not making screws tight enough. I hope you guys learned something in the video today. Hopefully it kind of took some of the daunting task away of repairing some stripped threads and hopefully can even save you some money in the long run. Thank you. Thanks for watching another episode of Ollie's Repairs. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and comment for more.